Good morning. Welcome back to EELE 461 561 Digital System Design. Uh, this lecture is associated with our meeting time on which would have occurred on Monday, April 13th. And again, this is Brock. Okay, so here's what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> we're going to continue looking at uh, crosstalk and differential signaling, and we're going to do simulation in this video, and I'll show you how to do that in ADS. Let's take two seconds, though, a minute, and look at the, the schedule for the rest of the semester because we're kind of winding down and some things are changing, so we got to kind of let you know what's happening, right? <laughs> so uh, if you look at the schedule, <clears throat> we're right here. So this is week 13 of the entire semester. And so we basically have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine classes left, and then we have finals week. And what I used to do in this class was I had a final project where you did another printed circuit board. And what you did is you chose some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of signal integrity issue, whether it's crosstalk or impedance discontinuities. Um, <clears throat> and then we would actually take it in the lab and we'd measure stuff. Well, we're obviously we can't do that, so we're going to rely more on simulation. But the final project is not practical anymore. So... You'll notice that if you go out into your grades, I've removed that final project. Uh, so what what I like here, what I'm enjoying, <laughs> and hopefully you are too, is this whole notion of every single lecture time, we have a little video and a pretty light homework. So instead of giving you a weekly homework, which is, you know, essentially three daily homeworks combined together, they're a little bit longer. Hopefully you're noticing that the homeworks that I'm giving now are, are pretty straightforward. They're pretty simple uh, and they shouldn't take a lot of time. And I like having them do the next period. And that's because it keeps you, you know, it keeps you honest. It, do, it allows you to not like sleep for five days and then get up, get up on Saturday and try to crank out all your classes. And so, and that's kind of the key, the key to these online courses is you got to stay engaged and stay up to date and just do a little bit. So you just chip away, chip away, chip away. So my plan as of right now is to continue that for the next at least two weeks. So you'll say basically, you know, today we're going to have a little homework, little homework Wednesday, little homework Friday. We'll do that again the following week. And then what I'm going to do is, if you notice, we had this exam number two in here. And what I used to do was exam number two would be, we would have probably already had it, but it was, it was a you know, essentially a take home exam where you talk about crosstalk and, in, you know, differential impedance, differential signaling and Z naught and Z even and all that sort of stuff. And then after we got done with that, we turn to the project. <clears throat> so now since we don't have a project, exam number two, we'll do that as kind of like a little, uh, we'll call it a final exam, but we'll, we'll figure out it, it won't be terrible. Okay. <laughs> so I want to try to make this, you know, is, is low of impact on you as possible. So what we're going to do is then this week before finals, I'll do a little video and we'll kind of review everything we've talked about and let you know kind of what the exam is going to be. And then the exam will be an online multiple choice uh, exam. And again, it don't don't worry. It's going to be straightforward. And then what we'll do is we'll have it due uh, by this Friday here. So then <clears throat> nine o'clock Friday, you're going to have this little exam that'll come. It'll probably I'll for sure activate it on the 29th. Uh, maybe even a little bit earlier, but that's going to be kind of the, the, the plan. So as of right now, the plan is we're going to do six more homework assignments, uh, short ones corresponding to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we'll do a little review on the 27th. We'll kind of do this exam and then it'll be due on the first and then that'll be the class. Okay. So when you go out to the homework, uh, you'll see that I'm adding these homework uh, points as I go. Exam number two will still be there and we'll have, you know, however many homeworks that comes out to be. And so you'll notice that homework 14 for today is there. Homework 15, I entered that just because I was in there. And so you'll see that you'll have, let's see, one, four more. And so you can kind of figure out the total points. Okay, so just to let you know, that's what's going to happen. Okay, no final project. We're going to have six more little homeworks, and then we'll have one exam, and it's going to be online, multiple choice, and it'll be this week. Okay? All right. So that is where we're at. <clears throat> okay. Let's turn our attention back to... Uh, crosstalk. And just to recall, notice that when two lines are coupled, uh, energy travels back and forth between a victim and an aggressor line, victim being the one that's 
originally wasn't transitioning, but now we are looking at what happens when it transitions, but it's still the victim in that we're kind of, we care about what got coupled onto it. And we have this now, we looked at how <clears throat> the coupling between them, the capacitance and the inductance, it actually changes based upon what the victim is doing. And so we defined kind of crosstalk, uh, near end and far end crosstalk for the situation where the victim was at a zero. But then we noticed that if we moved the victim in the opposite way, we started to see different uh, coupling mechanisms or magnitudes. And so it changed the way that things were coupled. And we called this the odd mode, okay, when the victim was changing in the opposite direction. And then we also noticed that the even mode, which is where the victim was transitioning in the, the same direction as the aggressor, it also resulted in different coupling mechanisms. So what we came up with was this whole notion of even and odd impedance, and those are all are in addition to the characteristic impedance. And so these are all for coupled lines. Okay, so that's the that's the key on this. If these lines are not coupled, all these impedances are the same, and they are impedances of the line itself, the aggressor line. You are looking down one line who happens to be, let's say, coupled to another line, but you care about the impedance of the aggressor line. And it is, you know, of course, to ground, because that's how we define it. It's V over I. <clears throat> and if they're not coupled, these are all the same. As you bring them closer to cl closer together and they start coupling, you'll notice that these all start having different values. Now, how do we find these values and then what do we do with them and how do we do the analysis? So we came up with a little bit of math and it was kind of, you know, it was a real high level, just giving us a kind of conceptual overview for near end and far end crosstalk. But what really happens in the real world is you use simulation tools. And so we can use line calc and figure out the Z odd and Z even of these things. And that's really what we do. Now, we did that last time. So at this moment right now, you should have been able to do a coupled microstrip and a coupled strip line. And you should have Z naught and Z even values for those. And they're going to be slightly different depending on whether it's a microstrip or a strip line. And so you should have those sitting in front of you right now. What we do now is that doesn't give us much of a feel for what's happening. We need to put those into some sort of simulation. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so here is my line calc. I, I'm i doing, let me pump in the values really quick for a two-layer board from Oshpark. And um, the dielectric constant is 4.5. There's 60 mils of separation between one and two, and then it's a 1.5, I think they said 1.5 or 1.4, because it's one ounce copper plus plating. Uh, I'm totally in the wrong line, so I'm an MC, MC lint. So totally, that was totally a waste of time. <laughs> okay, so let's go over to the coupled microstrip. Okay, so now 4.5, 60 separation, 1.5. The width of this is, I just happen to know that about 120 has given me 50 ohms. Put a spacing at 1,000, uh, and then length, let's, let's give it an inch. Now, what I'm trying to do here is if I analyze this, I'm trying to get 50 ohms for Z0. So if I come down here, Z0 is 50 ohms. So that's kind of how you always start off. And how did I know <clears throat> that it was 50 ohms? Well, I happen to know that in FR4, if you have a microstrip at a height of 60, a 50 ohm line is about twice that. So I started there. Notice that I'm at 49.62. I could probably change this to dial it in, but this is pretty dang close. So I put a thousand for the separation. So if you think about that, that's 120 and they're separated by an inch. There's no, hardly any coupling. And I can I prove that to myself because these values are all the same. Z naught, Z even, and Z, uh, Z odd, Z even, and Z naught. Okay. Now what I want to do is figure out the worst case coupling and that spacing would go down to six because that's what Oshpark did. Okay, so I go ahead and get my numbers from Z naught and Z even. And now I got 62 and I got 28. And those are the values that I care about. Now, what do I do? That was pretty quick. I got my numbers for the couple mic strip. Now what I want to do is let's go into ADS and see how we can do a simulation. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. And what I'm going to do in this simulation is just look at crosstalk. So I'm not looking at, uh, I'm just gonna look at crosstalk. So let's call this, it's actually gonna be homework four, 14, and we'll go crosstalk, crosstalk. Okay, there we go. And you, you should probably follow along because this is your homework or at least half of it. 
All right, so here we go. Here's our ADS schematic. And the question becomes, what do I, how do I model coupling in ADS? And you do it with this little buddy, C lin. <clears throat> so this is a coupled line. And notice its parameters, Z even and Z odd. <laughs> so that's why we did all this in line calc. So I have Z even is 62.5 and then Z odd is 28.4. So if I come over here, Z even is 62.5 ish. And then this is 28.4, okay, 28.4. And now notice that it's a coupled line. So you still have the parameters for the propagation delay. And so we put in for E is 360 and then F is one over, and let's make it one nanosecond. Okay. All right, so that's our coupled line. So now the question is, what do you want to do with that? For what I what I want to do is I want to look at crosstalk, not necessarily odd and even mode impedance. The Z even and Z odd are giving me the coupling parameters between these two lines. So let's go over and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab my let's see. So let's let's do a simulation. I don't have my my uh, Gaussian on here. So let's do sources, time domain. Let's slap a uh, exponential on here. Okay, that's, what is that? So let's get rid of that little guy. I want V exponential. Okay, all right, so there's that. And we're gonna do this. We're going to enter the parameter. Okay, so I'll go V high. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna go V high to V, V low is zero to two, because I'm gonna go across a 50 ohm or divide down, so I wanna have a one volt at VA. Uh, delay, let's do one nanosecond before our edge. Uh, tau is going to be how you define the rise time for this. So let's do 100 picoseconds uh, divided by 2.2. So that's our tau. And then for the delay, this is going to be when the second edge is. And let's put this out like 100 nanoseconds so you never see it. Okay, so there it is. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to drive that into VA, but I want to do it through a 50. So let's come back here and get our 50 ohmers. So we'll go 50. 50, we'll move this little buddy over and then uh, wire this up. So boom, 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 boom. <clears throat> and then we'll grab a 50, put it over here. And then we'll go boom, boom, boom. And notice that we're using 50 for everything. And that's because we don't know how we would terminate anything else. Okay, because we haven't covered that. <laughs> okay, so I got a ground, ground. Okay, life is good. I'm going to slap some grounds down here because what do I do with my uh, victim line? So I've just now set up the aggressor, and we can call this uh, VA, and we'll call it MS for microstrip. And that becomes important if you think about what you're going to do for your homework. And then this is VB microstrip. This is going to be apply, close. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap a resistor down here for the victim line. And that is because that's how next and vexed are, or next and vexed are defined. Okay, so now the question is, where are the nodes of interest? Well, it's right here. I want to know right here, this is going to be V near end for microstrip. And then this is going to be V far end for microstrip. Okay. Okay, so there's our simulation. So now we've entered a, we've entered a coupled transmission line. And this is kind of cool because we don't use C12 and L12 because then we have to build up a huge model and, it, and it's usually not accurate. So this is a more accurate, but it does have this uh, distributed nature of it. It's giving us these coupling, these Z odd and Z even, give us the L12 and the C12 distributed across one nanosecond. Okay, so now let's see what kind of errors we have and let's fire this up and that should be it. All right, let's fire this up, see what we get. No simulation. Well, yeah, you got to put a simulation in there. So let's do a simulation. So simulation transient, transient. Boom. I come in here. I want to go from zero. Let's go to five nanoseconds. And we'll step it at a pico. Say apply. Okay. Let's go ahead and save it. And now let's simulate and see if anything works. Okay. So I got some stuffs. All right, and I got my four lines of interest, so let's see what happens here. Okay, first of all, you notice you can't see any of them, so because they gave you the smallest possible line widths. So here is, put these all at five as I go along. So there's our first step, and then a nan nanosecond later, it arrives. Okay, and that's cool. 
And then I, I see this little guy. You can barely see it. They chose a really odd color. Let me change that over there and make it thicker so you can see it. And look at that. That is near end crosstalk. So this right here is what near end crosstalk looks like. And notice the characteristic shape. At the moment that the aggressor line hit, and I'll switch, it's here is a, right here is where V near end uh, crosstalk is. As soon as the edge hit here, coupling started right here. Okay, and so you see the thing jump up to some value. And then it stays at that coupled value for two TD. So it stayed all the way for two nanoseconds. And that's because the wave was traveling down here and the entire time it was traveling, it was charging up the aggressor line through the coupling mechanism. And then as soon as it, the, the incident wave got down here and terminated, then it still had injected energy that had to travel back. So you got that two TD characteristic. And nice, nice. Okay, so now let's look at the far end. So let's see if I can see that if I make it five. And it's like, okay, I can see it. Okay, check this out. So now notice that this is the far end. So that's this little note voltage right there. It does not show up until the wave gets there. Okay, but it had been building up. And so all of a sudden you see the whole thing building up and all of a sudden it pops there. But now look at this simulation. It's really interesting because it has that 2TD characteristic too. And that is because the waveform is traveling back through here. So this coupled wave comes over here and then it sends something back. And it's like, why did it, why did it send something back as opposed to like, this is like what we thought was going to happen, all this interesting energy. And you go, why did that send something back? That's not what we talked about. You know, we talked about it just being a little blip. Well, it's because nothing is terminated perfectly because there was a reflection that got sent back. So where in the world did a reflection come from? It's because, look at the waveform right here. So there are reflections <clears throat> that are occurring because there's an impedance discontinuity. And you go, I don't understand why there would be an impedance discontinuity. I put 50 ohms right here. And it's like, yeah, you put 50 ohms, but this is not 50 ohms. Because I started with a 50 ohmer there, but as soon as I brought these, these two lines together, it changed the characteristic impedance. So this is essentially looking like a 42 ohmer. So if I wanted to fix this, I would have to come in here and make this 42 ohms. And now what would happen if I did that? Let's, let's well, who, who better to try it than us? Let's see if that's what happens. Okay, it got a little bit better, but it still just had a little bit on there. So I could, but notice how, how small it is now. So now you get the blip, but there's just this tiny little bit on there. It's almost going away, but we can dial that in and get it absolutely perfect. Now we're down to like the 1%. Okay, so that's what, that's coupling and that's how you do it in ADS. Now, next time what we'll do is we'll look at the impact of changing the victim line and look at the impedances and that's kind of fun too. But for now, here's what your homework is. Homework number one, you are going to make this simulation for a microstrip, and I want you to enter your Z on Z even values for the six layer advanced PCB stack up that you did from last homework. Then I'm, and you, let's leave leave it at 50, okay? Because we don't we don't want to mess around with terminations yet because we don't know how to do it properly. So leave them at 50 and allow that that simulation to reflect. And then what I want you to do is copy and paste this and enter your values for the coupled strip line. And just take a look at, at the difference between those two because you should have different values for Z odd Z even depending on whether you did a micro strip or a strip line. And I wanna just see the difference in coupling mechanisms between them. So that'll be your homework 14. So you're gonna do a screenshot of, you know, be nice, get this on the, on the screen and also get your waveforms on the screen. You should be able to do it uh, pretty easily because this, this is basically part one once you pump your uh, <clears throat> once you pump your own values in there and then just put like the strip line ones down here and then have that over to the side of the screen. Okay, that is it. All right, good luck with your homework and we'll see you.